Well, the halls are decked at the Alhambra Theater here in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. We are finally getting to see a little shop here. It's not far from where I spend a bunch of time, but it's never been open before. It's starting to be a growing area and you're starting to see renovation. A lot of these buildings are inexpensive still, and because of that, antiques should be able to thrive here, but there have not been a lot of shops in the past. This one is one that I've never found open before. Well, this is a pretty shop and it is obviously festooned with things. It appears that this is a one owner shop, but it's got lots of little alcoves. So we're going to have some fun in here. I can tell. She says she's here Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays now. Very friendly, nice lady here. $85 on this stained glass. That looks like an English piece. I like the Bohemian cut lamp here as well. And that one is priced at a hundred. There's a nice little toothpick cut here. And what's your name? Oh, well, very good. Thank you. You're Catherine? Yes. Oh, it's great to meet you. My name is... I'm George. George, George Washington. That's right. <laughs> well, here we are. Let's see what else they've got in stock. There's a lot of decorated stuff, but there's obviously some old stuff in here. I see glass lanterns and things from the past. And if you got chimneys, these are so cheap that you could probably sell them. But this is what caught my eye. It's missing a few grapes. I have a few replacements. The one that it's missing, that it needs the most is right there. So this is fixable. It's going to need a lot of cleaning up. It's priced at 60. You know, it's a project and I have to really think about whether I want to spend that much on a project or not. This one says it's an English coal iron and it certainly is. This one says it's German made under patent. This one you notice is less expensive. It is newer. These look like they're 19th century. I imagine this is 20th. This place is definitely rich in a whole lot of interior items and a lot of different ages. In a local shop, a lot of times you're really selling more to an interiors market. So you're going to see a mix of things, but I see some fun stuff. This bowl over here, I believe is New Martinsville before it was Viking glass. And you'll notice a similarity because not just is the color the same, but the foot as well. New Martinsville turned into Viking glass in 1945. It says two for 12. I'm not sure what the second piece would be, but it does have a chip. Beautiful windows here. Thank you, they're so hard to find. They really are, yeah, this one's very nice. Pieces of quilts, some tops. A lot of these seem to be more recent. I kind of like the looks of this one though. It looks like a butterfly pattern. 1970s fabric, maybe even with the tiger print in it, but it's fun. This is an older one here in the rings. It looks like 50s fabric priced at 45. So her prices are pretty fair on these. Some neat primitive furniture. I'm glad to be able to show this. I've had a couple of people lately saying, why don't you show more primitives? We just have not been finding a lot of primitives lately, but this gal's got some. This looks like a nice old screen cabinet here perhaps uh, use as a pie safe for a cooling cabinet. You can tell it's hand hewn. It is missing one door. The old hardware tells us this is going to be from sometime probably right around 1900. I can't really get in to give you a better look though. Old barrel there. This is a nice handmade piece too. You can tell that this is right around 1900 round nail head, so not square. The hinges seem to be the type of thing that you could order at that point. Something that would have been handmade out here in the country somewhere in Kentucky just to be used because people knew how to make stuff here. A mola for Miss Universe. Okay. I'm very curious about that. This is $40. They seem like they all are, but boy, that's got to be something different. I don't know what the story is behind that. Well, this is kind of a cute pin with the big dangles. Yeah. Uh, I sell online, but I actually do shows and I do sell in mall spaces in the various places I go when I travel. So I do a lot of different things. Sounds to me like you're very busy. Uh, yes, too busy sometimes, but it is a lot of fun. A lot of small town shops, you got to be prepared. Zeno is running to the bank for me right now, actually. <laughs> Start searching it. It, you would appreciate more. Whole... Exactly. Well, thank you. I'm thrilled. I like them a lot. Wow, that airplane is sure something. And I see you have Snoopy in it. Where in the world did you get that? Uh, good morning. Another nice old piece that looks like it would have been made somewhere in this area. You can tell because they essentially used Wayne Scott. 
smaller nails, probably 19 teens or 20s. I grew up in a house that started to be built in the 20s and 30s with a lot of wainscoting that was very popular then. And it seems a little bit lighter and the finish a little lighter, which seems more like that era as well. This is more recent, but very cute with the kids in the pedal car. And these are pretty neat. Native American. And this is a known artist. Really pretty Venetian glass mirror. This one says 1940s, and it could well be because we did see them being imported and actually still are. These etchings are just really neat. And this one does actually seem like it has age when you start to look around the edges. The style also with the circular trim seems to be right for the 40s, as do these glass covers. And you can see a little bit of the silvering going around the edges, which actually gives it a really neat aspect. And it's expensive, but it's a beautiful piece. Oh yeah, that's interesting. I think I remember that from the 70s. In fact, I'm sure we had that in a class. These are cute Japanese from the 50s. I'm not sure what you're supposed to do with them. Use them as little ashtrays or nut dishes. You put your chopsticks. You could put your chopsticks on them, sure, <laughs> in the Mexican restaurant, yes. A dollar each. I really do like this too. $50, that's not bad for one of the ones that looks like a saddle. It's in pretty good shape. I think that's a pretty fair price for it. And she's been very generous actually with me on the uh, other pieces that I saw that I liked. So interesting that she has a lot of this kind of flavor because this is something that I'm used to seeing out West. This is this late 60s, early 70s textured plastic found in man caves back then. And that's probably where they go today as well. $22 each. Interesting Coca-Cola clock, probably 1980s with this very stark design. $50. I could see Max Headroom in front of that. Well, this place is fun. I'm glad that I finally got to see it open and I found something I think is really cool and she was very fair with me about it. So I'm going to go pay her and we're going to get on down the road. Ah, uh, so this is Edwardian from England, I see. Okay, well, that's a pretty interesting piece being a figural. And wow, somebody has it listed for over 3000 somewhere when you adjust for pounds. Interesting. One nice thing about a local shop is they're going to know where things came from. So this was made for Mr. Young when he opened the Young Hardware Store, not for sale. Yeah, local piece of history there. That is beautiful, though. Going to an individual antique shop turned up a few good things, and oftentimes you will get to meet someone fun, and they'll sell you a few things at a deal. And then there's church thrift stores. They may have a lot of whatever, but within that, once in a while, there's another good deal, and we're going to find out right now. Half off Christmas, because, well, it's not long from now. And see a crush and snow globes, mostly newer in terms of Christmas. I think these with the 12 days of Christmas, they want $15 for the set. I think these are from about 1980, as I recall. If you can remember all 12 days of the 12 days of Christmas, well, you're better than I am. I would have to have these in front of me to remember all those verses. Lords of Leapin' and oh, who knows what it all is. Second new Martinsville piece we've seen today already. This is a Janus pattern bowl and wow, three dollars for the console bowl. In my old days when I was mainly a glass dealer, I would have pounced on this for three dollars. Now I actually have to think about it, which is kind of a sad commentary. Crystal clear is beautiful when you get it up in light and it refracts light. So it's going to make a comeback, especially at prices like these. Old games and puzzles. Some more housewares here. Beatles glasses, but those are not old. Easy Bake Oven, but that's a newish one. The older ones do sell. I've gotten $35 and $40 for them before. I have a feeling that some stuff comes through this place once in a while. I don't think it's going to be a place you would find something every day, but if you live locally, you could find something like cute spinning nuns for $2. Or maybe something really good or modernist that's been donated. This place has been here for a long time. This was Butler Furniture back in the old days, and now it is an antique store. Also now at this point from the old days, 
I like the old signs. The furniture out here, obviously, they don't care too much about because it's getting a nice wash. Some things can take it, like those old mirrors there. Some things maybe a little less so. But I think they get this stuff really, really cheap, and this place is a pile. But you might find something in all these sticks, so we're going to take a look. I've only been in here once or twice. This is an old-time, family-run, old-school, packed store with whatever has been piled on whatever for years and years and years. You don't see a lot like this. Thank God today. Just lost him because he went in the back room there, but one of the butler descendants is running the shop today and he said to just take a look around and have fun. They're going to price stuff when they get to it. Some will be priced, some won't. A whole box of crystals. See, an old shop like this is a great place to come and find things you might need, bits and parts for other things and repairs you're doing. Nice cedar box for $10, one of those candy boxes from the 1920s. Obviously, stuff is piled deep in here, so, you know, there's a lot of common stuff that you're not going to want to go digging through, but at least it's up where you can see it, and there's going to be some things in here that might just be up your alley. There definitely are some collectible things and some newer things and a whole lot of things that are hard to get to and a lot of very ordinary things. But then look at those great old thermometers up on the wall there. Dad's root beer and new grape and Suncrest. There's a Dr. Pepper. They're not in great shape, but they are cool to look at. This cabinet is neat. The Chamber of Commerce presents the job makers and it says that it's been sold. I like the old Pepsi thermometer, especially that one's in the best shape. A little bit of taxidermy condition, maybe of some question. And yes, it is literally piled, piled, piled in here. The Coke machine seems to still work and be in use. This is 1970s Arco Rock pink. It's a little more peachy colored than the original Depression glass, so that's a good way to tell those apart. Stolen from the holiday, and isn't that nice? For $2, I think we have a sale. <laughs> oh, the iris and herringbow vase that we see quite a bit at the price we used to see. These are actually kind of cute. They definitely have a modern feel. And they are the stereo speakers. They're a hundred a pair. That is probably a pretty decent price for those if they work. And then, hey, with the shade, this would sell where I go. It is Moriage. It is a very cheap souvenir from the 50s, but it's Florida with a flamingo. And I'm pretty sure I can get a shade for that. So believe it or not, <laughs> I think I've got another purchase here. This is the fun of a place like this. You're probably not going to find the Hope Diamond, although you never know what might be buried in a place that's been piled like this for so long. But you might find a few cool things that you can make some money on and rescue from the pile. Lots of lamp and lighting parts back here. I guess we know what this place is. Salts and peppers and shot glasses and all the things you would expect. I like the bird. Let's take a look at this guy. It's a little favor vase, just small. It's only three dollars. You know, it was an American pottery, probably one of the small mom and pops. The glaze is similar to Royal Copley, but we may never know who did that piece. There is just no telling who some producers of studio pottery or ceramics are because so many people made things at home and never took credit for them. There's a ton of stuff in a place like this and lots of it is going to be unknown and miscellaneous to us, but we are looking to ferret out the things that we find interesting and know our collectors will like. And speaking of liking, if you would like this video, that really helps us with YouTube. It lets us know that people like this kind of content and please subscribe if you haven't because that way you can click the bell to be notified of future videos and we'll just have a lot of fun together. I like this radio here. It's white, a very basic color, but it's a neat old Motorola. It's got a good design. It's a clock radio. We'd have to plug it in to see how it ran, if it ran. Base is a little bit weathered, but in a way I don't think is unacceptable for a collector. And then there is the GE version, but this knob is a replacement, so that's out. Frosted blue willow pattern glasses. Those are actually not that easy to find now from the 50s in the screen print. And there's the little chili willy at $10. I think the little one is actually harder to find. 
Fostoria American candlesticks with the bell-shaped bottoms there. Those are pretty. I always like those. This is from the New York World's Fair, and it is the official butter dish in fabulous plastic. <laughs> Priced at $25. That's probably about right for that, because not many of those would have sold. They were kind of cheap to begin with. Not the sort of thing that you would think to buy at a World's Fair. And then of what did sell, how many of them are in any sort of condition? A bunch went through the dishwasher, got melted, who knows? I suspect the reception isn't great in this old building. It does actually play, so that's good. Well, the radio works. Now the question is, can we get a deal on the radio? Because um, he said something interesting. I introduced myself, said what I was doing. He said I was welcome to go around and do what I wanted, but he really didn't care if people knew where he was or not. That makes me think there's a little bit of sentimental hoard going on, because look at this room. This place is packed and packed and packed and packed and packed. I know they buy out estates. I know a lot of this is what's left over. Some of it is pretty decent. Some of it's saleable. Some of it I want to buy for resale. And some of it could just go down the road to the thrift store. The serving pieces are worth getting. Yes, there it is, Botanic Garden. We sold a whole bunch of this and it went fast at an estate sale in Florida. I wasn't necessarily thinking of buying a bunch of dinnerware, but it is the season. People are entertaining and people are indoors for the winter. And then that's a springy looking pattern. So it has a lot going for it. When I was a kid, these old ruby flashed candle holders were on the table of every Italian restaurant or pizza joint. This is a fascinating place. They do get traffic, that's for sure. The hanging lamps are a good color, but not in good condition. I would love to get a hold of another rack like this for my displays, but I can tell this is in use. If you come regularly, you're going to see everything that's new on top of the pile. She's from about 1910, but that is not in good condition. And a lot of things in a place like this are not going to be. You're going to have to watch really carefully, of course. Zeno had to run to ship something at UPS because tis the season. So, hello. hello. The Corel Wear pitcher here. You've got to be careful with these carafts because they did a recall at one point for the handle. So if the handle hasn't been replaced, uh, make sure the joinery is good. The, we got all the parts too. All the you got all the parts too, yeah. Oh, I'm too lazy to fix anything anymore though. So I've got to put them back on. Dishes it is. You know, you buy what's presented you and sometimes the deal is the deal, and this is definitely a deal at $75. Come on, do it again. <laughs> this is not, it's very loud. That's what turkeys sound like. Well, this is really interesting. He handed this to me and said, take a look at this. And it is marked and signed Commercial Club of Cincinnati with a Rookwood mark on it. And I'm looking to see what kind of wear this has. It does seem like it has edge wear on that silvering. Not so much on the other side, but hmm. I'm going to have to do some research about this. No down payment because you pay in full here. Well, we are down the road in front of the Pink Elephant in Tiny Town, Kentucky, right near the Kentucky-Tennessee border. And I might have to chain myself to this Pink Elephant. It is the two-year anniversary of us getting hit by the tornado in Dawson Springs. And... Well, now there's a big storm and a tornado warning, so we're gonna get back in the car and get to the flea market. Well, no, we're not. Zeno has decided we are driving out of this storm as fast as possible. We've lived through one tornado. They said it's headed towards Guthrie. That's where the flea market is in a metal building. No thanks. Wow, look at that sign go. It is the Outer Bands. We are watching the tornado from about five miles south. It's right behind that house, a couple miles behind, thankfully, for the house. It's a big thunderhead coming down as a tornado, so it doesn't have a nice single twister look like what we're used to seeing. It is just a big old huge scary storm that is cutting a swath of destruction at the cross what hopefully is a pretty rural area behind that house. But we're not going back till we know for sure. The scariest thing might be how fast this thing is moving. You can see it behind the trailer there and boy it's gone 10 miles in just a few minutes. Look at that giant thunderhead. The magnolia swinging in the breeze. Boy, this is really spooky. I'm glad to be seeing it from a distance instead of being in the middle of it this time. The town is still alive. Now we'll find out if the flea market is. 
This is the Southern Kentucky Flea Market in Guthrie. They're only open three days a week. This is our weekend to actually hit a bunch of stuff that we usually can't do because we're working on the weekends. This is really a flea market, so you're going to see things like these late 70s wash stands, repurposed furniture, repainted furniture, and some vintage items. And of course, we're looking for the vintage. We might find something in this area. This is half off. I always look at a half off booth, even if only for a moment. They do have one sort of fun modernist pattern, not an important pattern. This is Mikasa Chorus Stone. This is early Mikasa 1960s when they're doing that 60s modern look. This looks a lot like Metlock's Navajo from the same era. I see some glass that looks pretty. This Mary Gregory looks like it's a screen print. It's not very well defined, so I would stay away from that one, even though the cranberry glass seems nice. Farmers Bank and Trust in Princeton, Kentucky. I think that's still there. Two dollars. Local interest. That might be worth getting. I always like these silly advertising salt and pepper shakers from the early 50s. They're this crazy cherry red plastic that I have always thought was attractive even as a child. I remember thinking this was a great color and there's a patent number on it. This particular one is advertising an Admiral dealer. So early television somewhere on West 47th Street. So that was in some town of size, probably not around here. This one's a classic, the camel with the plastic salt and pepper shakers in it. Whole thing's plastic actually. Another spatter glass piece, $18. I'm not seeing a lot of great prices so far. I think these Fostoria pieces are pretty though. This is the Argus pattern as you see there. Not as well known as Jamestown, but about the same time in history for them. 60s and 70s, very pretty ruby red. Ruby red was really in in the early 70s. And then here we have a decorated Westmoreland bed vase for only $10, but it's been a little bit worn. Overzealous cleaning will take off the paint if you're not careful, even though the enameling is good. It was done aftermarket by the Charlton Company primarily. So it was not necessarily adhered to the glass in the same way. The Fenton decorators learned pretty quickly they had to treat the surface of the milk glass or else things like this violets in the snow pitcher could also wear off. This one is priced at $30. Now the tray is Fiesta wear, but these shakers are probably Garden City out of San Jose, California. Their rings are a little too many to be Bauer and not the right design to be Fiesta. This teapot is nice enough. This is Hall China. It's very, very dusty. It's only $9. Now that teapots are starting to come back, I'm starting to think to pick these up again at prices like this. So I think I'll probably get this. It's a plain color, but it's got a cute 1930s squat design. And the pointed spout does not appear to have any chips or cracks. And that is the important thing. That and checking the handle. But I think that one, as cheap as it is, it's a nice color and would sell just fine. That handle being very deco rectangular and yet curved at the same time. It's just got a lot of geometry, reminds you a little bit of the shapes of the Trilon and Paris Fair, the 1939 World's Fair in New York. This is Pilgrim Blast. It's $12. That's not a bad deal. I did have one of these. I did sell it, but it took me a while. But this one has the label and the other one I had did not. And I do believe that Cranberry is going to start to match gray interiors more than it has sold during the times of earth tones. I don't like to be told what to do. <laughs> Old federal glass punch bowl. This would be appropriate for the season. They've got 30 on the set. I sold a set for about the same by Hazel Atlas at the last show. A little bit of Lennox here. Classic patterns. The shell dish is something we see a lot. This is before 1953 because of the blue ink stamp. This piece also before 1953. 1850 and 1950, really the prices haven't changed in a long time. It's nice stuff, it's well done. It just has not been in step with a lot of people, but there are some fun modern designs like this one, which is priced at $9.50. This has the gold mark, so it is after 1953. Cable and grape carnival glass bowl is cute but $24 is pretty much full value on that. There's a bunch of the Metlock sculpted grape. 
They also had a transferware pattern in grape. Poppy Trail by Metlocks. 30% off will stop me for a minute at least. Just to see, aha, Francoma salt and pepper. These are cute. The teepees are good sellers. It's the pulpa, so it's after 1969. 30% off would make these about $11, but this one has a little nick, so that is out. Cute wall pocket. 29 minus 30% is a good price. This basket, Westmoreland. Now this has nice Charlton decoration and in good condition. And this one at 30% off is going to be $14.80. That is a possibility because I do think that's a $30 piece potentially. Sino just pointed these out too. These are also Westmoreland blue satin cattle holders. I always like the blue satin glass. It just sort of glows all by itself. These would also be $14 after the discount. And I did get $28 for the pair that I sold before, but it took me a while to find a home for them, so I'm not sure I'm going to go for those. How much is the McCoy piece? It has a chunk out of it. Oh, it doesn't. They often do. But they're both the same price, even the one that does not have a chunk. Really? $15. Oh, $15 it's is a great price if it's in good shape. It's got this tape on it. Is that bad? Oh, not with McCoy, no, because that glaze is fine. It'll come right off. Wow, $15 for the one in good shape is actually good for that piece. And inch. It says it seems very clean. I think we should get that. that. Yeah, that doesn't bother me. We can get that'll come off with steel wool. You want this? Nice. Yeah, I think I think you found something good. That face, fifteen dollars for him though, and I think that's what he would probably sell for. But he does have a great face. Well, Romer figures are pretty good, and now that I have discovered who they are. I am realizing that any of these Italian wood figures are worth looking for. This guy I suspect is from about 1980 because of the way milk is done on his jug here. That seems like the sort of generic print of that time. I like this guy. $18 seems like a good price, especially for a more complex figure that's on a base as opposed to just a single figure. That should sell for, I imagine, Oh, maybe as much as 65 to $100. So we're going to get that and see how it does. This place certainly is bigger than it looks, so it's fun to get in here. These are the Ham's Beer Bear, and they are $19.73, $9.99 each. Ceramart, product of Brazil. I had a lot of fights with dealers who were bringing in things made by Ceramart around 1990, in the early 90s, and trying to tell me they were vintage, and could not allow that. But now they are. Only $6 for the Franciscan Ivy salt and pepper shakers. The cork has fallen into that one. That is one problem. Old corks do shrivel. That's a pretty good price. These used to sell for about $20 when Ivy was a much more collectible pattern, but I think they would still double their money now. Blue and white kettle, but that's $75. I'm not really seeing those in stores very often at cheap prices. Here's another hall teapot from the 1930s, a little earlier in the 30s with all of this streamlining going on. It's the sundial pattern, and then they would do various decorations on it. Yellow is a color we see a lot. I think it's a cute color, and 24 is a fair price. Oh yes, an Afghan. A couple of them, huh? I think that one's probably 15. 15, really? Mm. Yep. It doesn't seem very big, though. No, it is bigger. Is it? There's one behind it, too. This one back here is ten dollars. Color, it's sort of a different look. It's not that's not very big, or at least it's thin, maybe, and it's bigger, but it's thin. It's thin, yeah. It's more of a summer weight. I guess we do have to start distinguishing that too, because there are summer weight and winter weight and everything between, just like with quilts. It's cute enough. Ten dollars, yeah. I mean, it's certainly a good price. But we did just put out a whole huge Probably stack to sell. I don't know. It seems like we have a lot right now. Peach tea set. Now these are very, very lightweight, but these are Japanese from the 60s. Older than it looks. 16 for the set is you don't think nice for a cute set. Vintage blue shoe. This is a McCoy piece. There's the Nelson McCoy mark on it. It's only $3, which is super cheap, but it's got a super chip. Well, we just heard another tornado warning and we're in a nice metal building, but they said that it's supposed to be about six miles away. So. 
we're going to just stay put. Of all the pieces of Gonder pottery we see, this is the one we see the most. This was his utility flower vase that he could sell to the florist. It's $14 now. Good price on it. When I was a kid, this was the Moo Cow Creamer, and you poured cream out of it, and they sold it at the restaurant. It was by this outfit in Pennsylvania. Well, at a certain point, even though it still says patent pending on it, they must have figured out that they were not going to sell any more of these that way, and so they turned it into sippy straw. So this is the original sippy cup from the 1970s. It's 10 bucks. It looks like it's in perfect shape. I made my mother get the Moo Cow Creamer for our table at home. In this case here, only $10. If this is in cleanable condition, $10 would not be a bad price. People always stored these flats so they would get covered with dust, which this one is, but I think it is just dust. We'll see if it zips properly. These were done in Japan in the late 60s, and I understand that some Avon representatives carried them at one point. 150 is more than I would even think to ask on the orange set, even though it's cool. This has damage at the bottom, so unfortunately I'm going to have to leave all of those, even though I like them. Sanders Glass Fairy Lamp, a fairly basic one, but it is Indiana's TR line. It's a nice amber color, and my goodness, $17.95 and 20% off. I think I'm probably getting that. This is a very cute 1950s cake server for $17.95 minus 25%. Lock and lift, I always like these. If you're going somewhere with cakes for a holiday event, you might need something like that. It's only $13.50 with the discount. They're having a big sale in this booth, and they have a lot of clocks, and I like clocks. Especially if they are electric. This one's a little damaged. Too bad, because it says it works. This one's cute. General Electric. This looks very early 60s. And at half price, if that works, I would take that. I'm sure I can get more than the tag price. This would be great if this works, but it doesn't feel like it has any of its innards. So we'll just set that up there. These other ones are a little more dowdy. Wood is not always the easiest seller for me, and this one also has been converted to quartz. So I'm going to plug this one in, but we might have a winner here. These old record files are selling now because people want any sorts of drawers to put things in. It's got a cool old graphic, and this one's $10 with the discount. They took a bunch of old windows and made a showcase out of this, and I've always liked that idea. This is a nice old pink elephant ashtray in depression glass from the 30s. $22.50 is a fair price these days. But what a great look that has. The owl bookends are cool, but they are not half off. I like the chip carving and the glass eyes. They're 30 for the set. And this is a flea market, so you're going to see all sorts of strange stuff. You're going to see new stuff. You're going to see used stuff. You're going to have dealers with tools. You're going to have people having essentially their garage sale here. But this one is half off, and they have some cool-looking things, so let's take a look. I love the color of the tape dispenser. I get why they think that's cool. Now, these would be even better if they were cattails. But these days, anything with a gooseneck that works, and this one was made so it could hang. This is definitely 1960s vintage. You want to make sure the gooseneck still works. That one works really well. This one's a little loose to one end, but it doesn't seem like it's broken loose. So you have to be careful because sometimes they get snapped at the base and then they're no good. 50% off. So I'm going to take it. Now this could be vintage. The elf driving the train. It is a bank. It's $11. This is late 70s. We see this Santa International Limited, late 70s, early 80s, made in Taiwan. It is vintage now. It's a little worn at the top. I probably should get it. I'm going to leave it for someone else. These are cute. These are 70s. They're almost like a paper mache, but they are actually a light ceramic. I believe Japanese made. They are $11 for the pair at half off. The footstool fan is $60 with the discount. Smoking stand's missing too much. A popcorn panda. Well, I sold all my popcorn at my Christmas sales, so let's take a look at him. 25, yeah, he's cute. He might sell for that. I don't know if you can hear that storm outside, but I might need this just to get to the car. 
Let's see what the price on the beverage set is. Wow, $12.50. Let's see how dented and worn it is. This says it is made in Italy. Tumblers seem pretty okay from what I can tell, but one of them is not the same as the others, so we do not have a set. That's too bad. I really like buying these, and $12.50 would be great. There is a dent at the top as well, so that's a pass. This is a neat screen print picture but they want $17.50 even with the discount and it might be a $35 piece because it's the Mexicali from the 1940s but I don't need to push it that much it's not a great deal so I'm going to leave it these speckled are cute I think these might be Stamford pottery well unfortunately flea market spring leaks so I need to go tell the person at the desk that they have a problem here at least right now it's getting caught mainly in the middle of this i think i just rescued this little motto which is only six dollars and fifty cents i'm thinking i was meant to save it so maybe it'll come with me anyway i've got to go tell them about this mess well gee now i feel sorry for them and i want to find something to buy but at least we rescued their stuff i got the picture that couldn't get wet off of the wall and ah look at the kitty but he's a single shaker they do have some cute stuff in here. This is very strange. It's a Royal Copley piece. A very odd cat doing something to this cowboy boot. It does not like this cowboy, apparently. It's scratching the heck out of it. A cart full of novels. I think we'll just keep on moving. Somebody bought this piece of furniture, and it's a nice newer piece. We had an estate sale in Beth Page, Tennessee, not far from here, that had a lot of this kind of furniture from the early 1990s that looked like old American oak. It was very well made, but was not actually that old, but very good quality. And so I can see the worthiness of this piece, although it does look like they had to change one knob. This is... Italian glass, but it looks like it's been dropped on its edge and bruised. I call that a bruise where you see some sort of internal cracking, but the piece hasn't fallen out. And that's too bad because it was only 1999, but it has lived a tough life. And this one as well, also Murano, a nice leaf bowl. It's $3.95, but it's chipped there, and I suspect there was a lot more to this leaf and stem when it was first made so gonna pass on that cute little dog planter this is mccoy it says it in big letters and so that one's hard to miss 35 dollars is about the right price on that now here's a project i could do if the price is right because this project involves polishing a frame and having a new piece of mirror cut and put in to an existing triptych mirror from the 1920s but it has more problems than that. The print on the left has damage. The print on the right is wavy, and so that's going to have to stay here, unfortunately. I liked the idea. 1980s Southwestern-style floor lamp. This is a style, well, we'll just have to see if that comes back. They certainly have it priced like they expected to at $250. Croquet. I've been looking for sets, and this one is only $25, but there are no balls and you can't play without balls. This looks like another one of these decorated box purses. Maybe not a Caronan, maybe somebody else. Let's see, maybe somebody even did it as a kit, but it's got mushrooms and birds. Certainly looks like their work though. Let's open the lid and see if we can find out. Ah, nope. This was done by somebody privately. Now there used to be a mirror here. But it's actually kind of a cutie thing, and I wonder what the price is. $24.50. Not really terrible. If I wanted to have a piece of mirror cut, I could see getting it. About Harris Tweed. Harris Tweed. I know somebody who really thought a lot of that, actually. How much is that piece? It's handwoven in the outer Hebrides. Right. That actually was a big deal at one time. $19.50. That's the price. Yeah, it has, but they got it over there. See? Yeah. And it's 70 per se. Oh, it has a hole. Does it really? Ah. Yeah, it's chewed on it. The inner mouths of the Outer Hebrides. Well, we made it home in one piece, thank goodness. And I want to show you the haul. 
because we risked life and limb to get it. This particular haul also will let us explain a few rookie mistakes that resellers sometimes make that cause their items to not sell as fast or for as much as they think they should. So we're going to talk about that as we go along. But let's start at the front because the first things we got were these. She knew what they were, or at least that they were good. She also knew that she did not have a customer for them, so she gave me a very nice deal. These are molas. The mola come from a tribe in Panama. You can see the open work through the back and the reverse stitching that makes it all come together. But these were specifically done for the Miss Universe pageant in 1986 in Panama. We're going to do a little research on these and put them on eBay and you'll find out more about them in our level 2, level 3 bonus video coming up towards the end of the month if you are a level 2 or level 3 member. If not, well, check out our membership and you can see what the perks are for that. But I think they're pretty good. I only paid about $16 each. The ruler I just got because Farmers Bank is still locally involved in Princeton, Kentucky, and I figured this was local interest and it was only a few bucks. It's Westmoreland glass. It's got the Charlton decoration on the front and the back. The fact that it's on the back makes it more desirable to me. And they knew what they had, but they were having a big sale, and so I got this for under $15. This also came from the first shop, and I just thought that those little green grapelets were a lot of fun and very swingy. I find that jewelry with motion usually sells pretty easily, and it was only $12. It's going to date to the 1960s. Here's another reseller mistake. Yes, you want to make sure the tops don't fall off of things. Sometimes they are loose. Sometimes even a little bit of tape to hold them on down by the edges is fine. But what if I'm buying this and I want to see the condition? I have to unglue, which I did, this entire big gummy piece of tape to get the pieces apart, and then I taped it back together because, well, it was already stuck on there. A lot of people are not going to go to that much trouble. Make it easy on your customers. On the other hand, that made it a buy for me as a reseller. There we go. Much better. And it's really well seated in there, so a little tape would have been plenty to hold that on if you felt it was necessary. The guy in the middle here is a roamer from Italy. I've had several of these before. I think he's really cute, and the more complicated figures on a stand rather than just a single figure seem to do pretty well. He was under $20. I believe he should sell for about $65. We're going to find out again in our bonus video later this month. And then we have the three electrical items. I was really happy to find some things that were functional, interesting household stuff like you would have in any regular house, as opposed to just strictly glass or china or that sort of thing. Don't worry, we got a lot of china. We'll show you that next. Here's another thing resellers do. They wind the cord around the radio. Does that look good? Does that look appealing? Mm, no, it sure doesn't. And so the radio was only $10 because it didn't look good. This piece was actually displayed well, but the dealer was having a big sale. And then this one, another example, it was priced at 50 It was in a half-off booth. I took it because I can probably get 60 or 65 for this in Florida. Any of these gooseneck lamps, if they're not broken, are desirable now. But how am I going to test this if I'm a customer and the cord is wrapped around it 50 times? I have to really want this item, which also was never cleaned or made presentable for resale. It was just stuck in there with the cord wrapped around it. Well, no wonder it sat and never sold. I'm going to present it properly, and I'll bet we sell it at the next show we do. And then the last big purchase was dinnerware, believe it or not. Port Marion. Most of this is botanic, although we did end up with a very appropriate holly and ivy jug of theirs. Port Marion has been around a while, but they were really popular about 30 years ago, and because of that, a lot of people are still trying to match their set. There's our Port Marion logo, which states that the business has been there since 1816, but this is definitely one company where their more modern pattern has really turned out to be a popular collectible. I think perhaps because people knowing it's more recent, the sizes of the plates are more what people are used to now, that's microwavable, it's dishwasher safe. A lot of other older patterns are too, but I think people don't realize that. But this is one that they get it. And the prices are good on these, and that's why I paid $75 for this set. It has a few serving pieces. The casserole bowl there, that's worth somewhere in the $50 to $60 range by itself. The holly and ivy pitcher should be around $30. The cream and sugar should be in the $30 to $40 range. 
Some of these various coffee cups are more common than others, but some of the beakers, especially the slant side, are less so, and they can sell for some money. Plates are going for $25 to $30 each, and I believe I got eight. And then the bowls are going for about $20 each. The cereal bowls, maybe 15 each on uh, salads, and then the bread plates, maybe somewhere around 10. And those are pretty conservative prices, but you add all of that up, and I probably got $400 worth of dinnerware for 75 bucks, so I could not say no. Well, I hope you remain storm-free where you are, and in the meantime... If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video, and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.